A woman who was in a coma for more than 14 years gave birth at a nursing facility in Phoenix, Arizona. Comas can be different for different people. As mentioned in other answers, a person may be able to feel things yet not respond. Others may not feel anything yet their bodies are still alive. People in a coma are given food via a tube. So, since most people in comas are in a hospital and not a cave, they're still getting food introduced into their system. In all cases, though, there is not an iota of consent here, so it will be rape in all these cases. The ethical questions regarding the pregnancy would be a hurdle that would have to be discussed as well, all in all a difficult topic. According to their report, the victim, who remains unnamed, gave birth to a healthy baby boy on December 29th. A whistleblower, who remains anonymous, told the CBS News affiliate that none of the staff knew she was pregnant. None of the staff was aware she was pregnant until she was pretty much giving birth, she said in a TV segment that disguised her voice and hid her face. From what I've been told, she was moaning, and they didn't know what was wrong with her. A woman said to have been in a vegetative state for at least a decade at a private health care facility in Arizona in the U.S. reportedly gave birth recently. The birth at the facility in Phoenix triggered a police investigation and reviews by state agencies in a situation that the state's governor's office called deeply troubling. AZFamily.com, a news website for television stations KPHO and KTVK, first reported that Thursday that, according to sources not identified by the website, a woman gave birth on December 29th living at a Hacienda healthcare facility where staff members were unaware she was pregnant. Two other Phoenix television stations later aired similar reports. According to some reports, the woman was a victim of a near drowning more than 10 years ago. Her identity hadn't been reported, and it's not known if she has family or a guardian. Sources quoted in the reports said the woman was heard to be moaning and that the baby's head was starting to emerge when a nurse came in. None of the staff were aware she was pregnant until she was pretty much giving birth, azfamily.com quoted a source familiar with the situation as saying. That person said the baby was said to be alive and healthy. Following the azfamily.com report, Hacienda Healthcare and state officials issued brief statements about the situation, expressing concern and describing reviews being conducted and steps being taken. But they did not specifically confirm the reported pregnancy and birth. A Phoenix Police Department spokesman, Sergeant Tommy Thompson, said only that the matter is under investigation. He declined to confirm whether the investigation involved a possible sex crime or elaborate on the circumstances that prompted the investigation. Hacienda said in a statement that it was cooperating with law enforcement and reviewing its security protocols after becoming aware of a deeply disturbing incident and an unprecedented matter. While federal and state privacy laws prohibit us from publicly discussing a patient's health or case, Hacienda has and will continue to cooperate fully with law enforcement and all the relevant regulatory agencies regardless of this matter, Hacienda said in a statement. Hacienda's website said it serves infants, children, and young adults who are medically fragile or have developmental disabilities. State Governor Doug Ducey's office said Ducey was briefed on the deeply troubling reports as soon as the office learned of them, and the state agencies immediately began taking every measure to protect patient safety. According to Arizona Department of Health Services, an agency that regulates healthcare facilities, the 60-bed Hacienda facility was required to tighten security procedures to protect patients in the wake of the report. We are aware of the situation and are actively working with law enforcement in their criminal investigation, the department said in a statement. The State Department of Economic Security, a social service agency whose functions include serving disabled people, said it performed health and safety checks on all the residents at the Hacienda facility after the birth was reported and was working with police on their investigation. As an organization, Hacienda Healthcare stands fully committed to getting to the truth of what, for us, represents an unprecedented matter, spokeswoman Nancy Salmon told Arizona's family. We are already conducting a comprehensive internal review of our processes, protocols, and people to ensure that every single Hacienda resident is as safe and well cared for as possible. Anything less than that is unacceptable to our team, our company's leaders, and the communities we serve. The victim was reportedly a patient at the facility for at least a decade after nearly drowning and falling into a coma. Male staff is reportedly no longer allowed in the rooms of female patients at the facility unaccompanied as the investigation is underway. 
the Arizona Department of Health Services said in a statement that it's also helping with the investigation. We had consulted attorneys to determine whether it would be legal for our company to compel our employees to undergo DNA testing conducted through Hacienda or for Hacienda to conduct voluntary genetic testing of staffers, the facility said. We were told it would be a violation of federal law in either instance. We will continue to cooperate with Phoenix Police and all other investigative agencies to uncover the facts in this deeply disturbing but unprecedented situation. The victim has been in a vegetative state for 14 years following a near-drowning incident and is an enrolled member of the local San Carlos Apache tribe, the tribe spokesman said in a statement on Tuesday. On behalf of the tribe, I am deeply shocked and horrified at the treatment of one of our members, Terry Rambler said. When you have a loved one committed to palliative care, when they are the most vulnerable and dependent on others, you trust their caretakers. Sadly, one of her caretakers was not to be trusted and took advantage of her. In an anonymous interview with ABC 15, a former caregiver for the woman expressed disbelief that her pregnancy went unnoticed. I can't believe that somebody would bathe her daily for nine months and never know that she wasn't having a period, that she was growing in her midsection. The nurses weren't keeping track of her weight, the former caregiver said. Those things are shocking to me. Comatose pregnancies, including those resulting from sexual assault while the person is temporarily or permanently unconscious or brain dead, are extremely rare but not without precedent. In 2015, a Spanish-language publication in Argentina reported on a similar case in which a woman in a coma had been sexually assaulted and impregnated, but the family didn't press charges and the case was never investigated by police. Regardless of the legality of the Precipitating Sex Act, comatose pregnancies come with both medical risks and complex ethical issues for the victim's family to navigate. It's possible to bring a fetus to term, but it depends on how far you are in the pregnancy, bioethicist Arthur Kaplan said in an interview with Vice in 2015. If you're at 28 weeks, you could probably have a C-section, but if you're only two weeks pregnant, I don't think many hospitals would try that because it would harm the fetus. However, that's exactly what happened in 2001 when doctors in Cincinnati learned a patient named Chastity Cooper was two weeks pregnant when she suffered serious head injuries in a car accident and lapsed into a coma. The pregnancy was carried to term and delivered vaginally as doctors ruled out a C-section because of the risks of giving anesthesia to comatose patients. In 1995, a woman identified only as Kathy, who had been in a coma for a decade, was raped and impregnated by an aide in a New York nursing home. Kathy's pregnancy was discovered when she was four months along, but her Roman Catholic family was against abortion and chose to have her carry the fetus to term. Kathy died shortly after her son's first birthday, and the case resulted in the passing of Kathy's Law in 1998, which requires background checks for nursing aides. Family members of the woman in Phoenix have declined to give public statements for the time being, but their attorney told Huffington Post, the family obviously is outraged, traumatized, and in shock by the abuse and neglect of their daughter at Hacienda Healthcare. They would like me to convey that the baby boy has been born into a loving family and will be well cared for. Apparently, there have been very few instances in history where a pregnant lady in a coma has carried a baby to term and given birth, Here's one such example. Coma woman gives birth to daughter. Considering that childbearing is an autonomous process, requiring little to no conscious will from the mother, the child can be carried to term quite easily, as long as there are doctors closely monitoring the mother's nutritional needs and watching for any undesirable development. It's important to note that coma victims are possibly the most vulnerable patients in the world. They are unable to communicate their needs or monitor themselves in any way. In 1996, a woman in a coma became pregnant by rape. Woman, 29, still in 10-year coma, is pregnant by a rapist. She was a Roman Catholic, so her family decided to continue the pregnancy. At the time, according to the New York Times, several prominent biomedical ethicists said that while they can cite cases of pregnant women who fell into comas or suffered brain death, they cannot recall any other case of a woman becoming pregnant while already in one of those conditions. However, there was another case in 2015 when a comatose Argentinian woman was raped and, like the Roman Catholic girl, became pregnant. In the first case I mentioned, a recently impregnated woman became comatose in 2001 and the baby was born completely healthy via vaginal delivery, weighing in at 7 pounds, 7 ounces. At the time, her doctors could only find records of eight other comatose pregnancies in the U.S. medical literature and no other cases carried the baby to full term. 
There are many problems with a coma victim being pregnant that make it less likely to end well, but it's perfectly possible for a coma victim to give birth to a healthy baby. However, a horrible possibility to contemplate, there is a word for anyone who impregnates a comatose person. Rapist. I don't care if it's the person's legal spouse. If someone does not give consent to any given encounter, it's a rape. A young coma patient in New York nursing home was raped and became pregnant. It was discovered at about five months. She was transferred to a hospital where accounts of her story stopped. The parents wanted to give birth if possible, but what happens not public knowledge? Not even her name was ever revealed. There was intense ethical discussion and much testimony from family and friends about her views on abortion. The nature of her coma was that she could feel pain and her eyes wandered around the room. I have no mention of what neurologists might have determined about her mental capacity other than pain. So long as the injuries or illness causing it caused no harm to the reproductive system or brain functioning controlling vital hormone balance or other such complications, basically, if one was damaged in ways that in no way affected the functioning of reproduction, yes, you can. It entirely depends on what's causing the coma. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.